Hi, I'm Ayush, a cloud support engineer from the Big Data Support team in Sydney. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the AWS command line interface to assume an AWS identity and access management role. Let's get started. To start, I'll use the AWS CLI to create an IAM user with permissions to assume roles. To complete the step, you must be an IAM administrator that has permissions to manage and set IAM users' roles and policies. First, I'll open the CLI and then run the create user command to create the IAM user that will assume the role. In this example, the username is test user. Next, I'll create an IAM policy that grants the test user access to only Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, Amazon EC2 instances, and permissions to assume the IAM role. For this example, I'm using the Vim CLI text editor. However, you can use any CLI text editor of your choice. The policy allows the following actions. EC2 describe, describes all EC2 instances within the AWS account with read-only access. IAM list roles, lists the IAM roles that have the specified path prefix. STS assume role, assumes the IAM role within the same account. Note that if you have a trust policy that allows the source identity to assume the role, then an identity-based policy that includes STS assume role isn't required. In this example, I'm using this JSON policy document. If your role needs cross-account access, then you must include the assume role action in identity-based policies. To write and quit the file, I'll enter colon wq. To create the IAM policy, I'll run the create policy command. The output of the create policy command includes information such as the ARN, Amazon resource name, of the IAM policy. I'm going to note the IAM policy ARN from the output to use later, and then run the attach user policy command to attach the policy to test user. To verify that the policy is attached, I'll run the list attach user policies command. Again, I'm using Vim to do this, but you can use any text editor of your choice. Here are the contents of the example role trust policy.json file. If the account ID allows the STS assume role action in its permissions policy, then this trust policy allows users and roles of account ID to assume the role. To restrict a role that a specific IAM entity uses, replace the account ID with a user ARN or an account ARN. Again, I'll save this file using colon wq. Let's now create an IAM role and attach the trust policy. I'll run the create role command to create the IAM role and define the trust relationship according to the JSON. Make a note of the role ARN for use later. Then I'm going to run the attach role policy command to attach the Amazon RDS read-only access AWS managed policy to the role. You can attach either AWS managed policies or custom policies depending on your security requirements. Finally, I'm going to run the list attach role policies command to verify that the policy was successfully attached to the role. Make sure to verify that the test user has read-only access to EC2 instances and can assume the example role. Next, let's create the access keys for test user. To create the access keys, I'll run the create access key command. Be sure to note the access key ID and secret access key from the command's output. Next, I'll configure the access keys. To configure the access keys, use either the default profile or a specific profile. To configure the default profile, run AWS configure. You may choose to create a new profile as well. For this, you can run AWS configure with a target profile. I'm going to complete this step on a separate CLI terminal tab. For this step, I'll need the access key and secure access key that I noted earlier. For the AWS region, I'm using AP Southeast 2, which is Sydney. I'll now verify that the AWS CLI commands are invoked and verify I am user access. First, I'll run the get caller identity command. In the commands output, you'll see an IAM ARN similar to this one that verifies that the AWS CLI commands are invoked as test user, as the user ID is exactly the same as one where we created this user. Next, I'll run the describe instances and describe DB instances commands to confirm that the IAM user has read-only access to EC2 instances and no access to Amazon Relational Database Service DB instances. The output from the describe DB instances command shows an access denied exception because the test user doesn't have access to Amazon RDS. Let's now assume the IAM role. To get the role's ARN, I'll run the list roles command. Note down the output at ARN. To assume the role, I'll run this command and include the role's ARN. From the credentials section of the command's output, note the access key ID, secret access key, and session token. 
This example uses the environment variables role access key ID, role secret key, and role session token. Note that the timestamp of the expiration field is in the UTC time zone. The timestamp indicates that the temporary credentials of the IAM role expire. If the temporary credentials are expired, then you must invoke the STS assume role API call again. To increase when the app maximum session duration expires from the IAM role's temporary credentials, use the duration seconds parameter. Now, let's create environment variables to assume the IAM role and verify access. For Windows systems, replace export with set. To verify that the IAM role is assumed, run the get caller identity command. In the command's output, you can see that the ARN is AWS CLI session instead of the session with test user. Next, I'm going to run the describe instances command to verify that the assumed IAM role has no access to EC2 instances. As you can see in the command's output, there's an unauthorized operation error message. Then I'm going to run the describe db instances command to verify that the role has read-only access to Amazon RDS database instances. You can see that the command's output returns Amazon RDS database instances. Now I'm going to remove the environment variables to return as the IAM user. It's essential to do this when the temporary credential has expired. I'll run the unset command to remove the environment variables and the get caller identity command to verify that I returned as the IAM user test user. For Windows system, set the environment variables to empty strings to clear their contents. The procedure that I've just completed is the manual process to assume the IAM role. However, there's a quicker way to assume an IAM role. First, I'll run the command to open the AWS config file within the Vim editor. You can see that currently only a default profile exists with the region set as AP Southeast 2. I'll add the IAM role ARN to the end of the file to create new name profile called test role profile. I'm going to use the default profile from the copy file to assume the role. If you use a different profile to store the test user's credentials, then you might need to change the source profile. To save the file, I'll enter colon wq. To verify that the role is assumed, I'll run the get caller identity command. In the commands output, you'll see the account, user ID, and ARN of the role session. Finally, I'll run the describe RDS instances command and add the profile tag at the end. The command's output from this process is the same as the output from the manual process. You are able to see RDS instances, but no access to read-only EC2 instances. So now you know how to use the AWS CLI to assume an IAM role. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.